welcome to Old Classic Car and in this video we are looking at the glorious Jaguar E-Type and to begin with a bright red Series 1 E-Type Roadster. What a stunning bit of kit that is. The location is Capes Thorn Hall in Cheshire and there's a variety of other classic Jaguars in the background there as well but in this video we are looking purely at the E-Type or as it was known in America the Jaguar XKE. Next up we have the first of two photos that will feature in this video of a 66 Series 1 E-Type 2 plus 2 Coupe. The beautiful metallic blue example it is as well. What a cracker. Down to the NEC, the classic car show, and in the auction area a few years ago was this slightly sad looking E-Type. I believe this is a Series 1.5 car, the revised version of the Series 1. Date into about 1968, it's a 2 plus 2 auto and left hand drive. Clearly plenty of work there for the next owner. And you can actually see, interestingly, you can see the rocker switches. That was a feature introduced in the revised Series 1 and a half. The earlier cars, the Series 1 E-types, had toggle switches, but um, they were replaced for safety reasons and they ended up with those rocker switches very similar to the early XJ. Okay, there are plenty of competition E-types also in this video. Here we have EYY618B, which is a fixed head coupe, a Series 1 fixed head E type coupe in dark green with a 3.8 litre XK engine. And doesn't that look beautiful on those painted wire wheels? Now, two photographs here in late 2022. I took these. We've got an N registered, so quite a late example of a V12 Series 3 E type Roadster. Very sharp looking car indeed. Very damp day this was, I remember it very well. There's another view of the same car, it's on an N reg, so that's late 74 or early 1975. The very last E-types were produced um, in 1974, so I'm guessing this is one of the very, very last cars. Of course, it was replaced by the XJS. Going back earlier in time now, we have CAD 457E, two photographs of this one. This is a 4.2 litre road, so it's a fairly late one. And no headlamp covers. You'll note that the earlier Series 1s have the glass headlamp covers, but these were removed on the very late Series 1s and also on the Series 1.5. So there's a rear view of the same car. It's a different event, a different classic car meet. What a stunning car that is. Tinted glass as well. You can just about see that as well. Very, very nice car. Let me know in the comments which of the E-types would be your choice. Which of these would you put in your garage if you had the choice? Now we're over at Alton Park, there was a historic car race meeting a few years back and there was this glorious lightweight E-Type out on track and what a glorious sound that made, absolutely wonderful car. Next up in this collection of E-Types, we're still at Alton Park as you can see on the building in the background, they've got a pair of E-Types there, interesting to do a comparison there between the V12 Series 3 2 Plus 2 in the foreground and the much earlier Series 1 uh, E-Type just parked next to it. You can see the different roof lines and the wheelbase as well on the later car. Now, I think this was Donington Park, I think. Um, and it's a, well, the car is a glorious, lightweight E-Type. What a, what a great looking car that is. Next up in this collection of Jaguar E-Types seen over the years, we've got KSJ. 712. I look this one up. It's a 1962 3.8 Roadster. The early series ones all had the 3.8 litre straight six engine built 1961 through to 1964, and this is a 62 example. Now, a nice old photograph here CYN 746C, seen in the 1960s, and you can see it's had a bit of a ding on the front corner there, which has affected how the bonnet fits. And amazingly, this car is still on the road, it's still taxed, still on the road here in the UK. So, uh, yeah, it's great to know that this one's still about. A couple of E-types here. We've got a 65 fixed head in the foreground there. That's a 4.2 litre car. Uh, the 4.2 engine replaced the 3.8 in 1965. And, uh, yeah, same power output, but a little bit more torque. So uh, I'm sure that was a very welcome upgrade. Oh, dear. Things appear to have gone very badly wrong indeed for this poor old E-type. B reg so that dates to 1964 um, but yeah hopefully that one got swiftly repaired and back out on track before too long 
Now we're down at the NEC Classic Car Show, the National Exhibition Centre. They have a huge classic car event every year. We've got an L-Reg uh, Series 3 2 Plus 2 Coupe. Um, it's got the big chunky chrome wheels on it and the hubcaps, which look like possibly XJ hubcaps. I thought the E-Type had much larger black centres to them, but we'll see. Anyway, back to the earlier cars, another Series 1 Roadster here. Beautiful example, and you can see the earlier flick switches in the centre of the dash, which was a feature of the earlier Series 1 E-Types before being replaced with the rocker switches with the Series 1.5. Got a V12 Roadster here on a K plate with a hard top. You don't see those too often. Uh, the rear arches have been modified slightly on this example. They are flared on the Series 3 anyway, but these appear to be a little bit more flared than normal. Well, this was seen at an auction at the Alton Park Gold Cup only a couple of years or so back. A Rob Beer prepared, it looks like one of the old mod sports racers from the 1970s, but a pretty wild bit of kit. But there is an E-Type hiding under there somewhere. Next up, a glorious gunmetal grey, late series one, a 4.2. What a beauty that is, I do like that. That's a great colour. Some colours really suit E-Types and that's definitely one of them, I think. This was at Bista, one of the uh, Bista Scramble, the Sunday Scramble meets, and it's a Series 2, 2 plus 2 coupe on very period looking Wolf Race wheels. Very, very 1970s looking car, that one. Great stuff, great to see a slightly modified example out and about. And it's got one of those full length sunroofs as well. If you've ever wondered what it looks like if you take the bonnet off your E type, well, there you go. That shows the, uh, the straight 6 XK engine and those lovely exhaust manifolds there as well. All very accessible if you take the bonnet off, but I can imagine realigning those huge bonnets must be a real job. That's not something I ever fancy doing. Okay, VAP 208H is a Series 2 Jaguar E-Type, of course. It's on an H plate, so about late 69 or early 1970. Finished in BRG, British Racing Green. Well, this is one of the low drag cars, much lower roof line, very different bodywork at the back. 81 WPD is the registration, I'm assuming. This is a replica of one of the original low drag cars, but yeah, what a glorious looking car that is. Another one alongside, which we'll see in a later photograph. Now, 848 CRY, this one should look familiar to anyone who may have watched the the original Italian job film. This is the car from that film. We spotted this in the car park at one of the Goodwood meetings about 20 years ago. And it was just parked up there in a line of cars. I couldn't believe it. Much more recently, this was in 2022, and we've got a side-on view of a Series 3 V12 E-Type. Um, the Series 3s, these were available. Most of them were automatic, but you could get a manual gearbox. But like I say, most of them were autos. These were built from 1971 through to 74 replaced by the XJS. Down to Goodwood, one of the revival meets, we've got a pair of race prepared Jaguar E-types here. Now, this is probably one of the most famous E-types of all, 77RW, it's shown here at the Jaguar Daimler Heritage Trust. A Gaiden, that's a February 61 car, and the original Geneva Motor Show car from 1961. It later went on to be used as a road test car. It's a very early car indeed. There's a driver's eye view. Apparently, this is the oldest surviving E-type roadster, chassis number 85003. Price new, £2,098, including taxes. What a great view down the bonnet that is. The rear on view of a much later E Type, a Series 3 V12 Roadster XPA 606N, another late example from 1974. Um, and that's just a stunning looking car. Just needs some of those nice reflective metal number plates to really finish it off. Most E Types that you see now will have been restored at some point or other, and here is one mid restoration. Uh, like I said before, to get that bonnet to fit must be. A real headache, especially if you've replaced any of the wings or any other accident repair work maybe that's been undertaken. That must be a job and a half. Back to Donington Park quite a few years ago in the historic festival. We've got another race prepared E-type Roadster with hardtop and those glorious centre knock-on wheels. They just look 
they just look superb, I think. Carrying on with these E-types, and we have a lovely Roadster here, bright red V12 Roadster headrests, of course, um, uh, standard fitment on E-types by this point in time. The earlier cars didn't have them, um, but another one of the influences of American safety regulations, uh, that saw the introduction of head restraints that you see there. Another lovely E-type Roadster here with hardtop. I think that is one of the better looking hardtops on British cars. Sometimes the hardtops don't look great, but I think the E-type hardtop really suits the lines of the car very well indeed. Okay, this was in the Alton Park paddock a few years ago. We've got a 4.2 Series 2 E-type fixed head coupe. You can tell it's a Series 2 because it's got the larger rear lamps. The Series 1 cars have much slenderer lamps above the bumper. The Series 2s were below the bumper and much larger. Okay, here we've got our left-hand drive E-type. It's a Series 2 again. The Series 2 is the only E-type that had the bumper that went all the way across the front of the car, across the opening of the uh, air intake. You can tell it's an import left-hand drive and it's got those extra marker lamps on the front wings or front fenders that you can see there. Back to Donington Park Historic. A few years ago, we've got XAS 885, another example of a race-prepared E-Type. And again, those wonderful centre-lock Dunlop wheels in evidence there, which look fantastic. Slightly wider wheels on an E-Type really do fill out the arches nicely, I think. Rear-on view of another of the low-drag replicas. Much lower roof line, very, very shapely rear end. Very similar, in fact, to the, the later XJ13. If you've seen a rear view of the XJ13 race car, which they only produced one of, it looks very, very similar to that indeed. Over at the Prescott meeting one, one time at the, um, the hill climb venue, we've got 70E. What a great registration that is. The car is a Series 2, and you can tell that, um, whereas it has bigger lamps at the back, it also has larger lamps at the front under the front bumper, you can see there. That's a private registration plate, registered October 1970, that car. Next up, 33XNE. That one was registered in October 1971, and you can see that on its V12s, the Series 3 V12 2 Plus 2, you can see those hubcaps, very similar to the XJ, but much larger black centre part to them. Okie dokie, now we have an F registration car. This was registered July 1968. This is the Series 1.5, um, which all of which had the removal of the glass headlamp covers over the headlights, as you can see there. But yeah, very nice car. Back to Capesthorn Hall for a moment, and a side-on view now of a Series 1 uh, E-Type fixed head coupe. I mean, do British cars, certainly British road cars, get any better looking now? Even Enzo Ferrari, who was quite a fickle character, he was a big fan of the E-Type. So if he likes it, well, must be doing something right. Okay, 633HRH, another private plate on a Jaguar E-Type. This is a Series 2, 2 plus 2. The 2 plus 2 had an extra set of seats behind the front seat, higher roof line, longer wheelbase. Um, yeah, a lot more practical, but slightly compromised styling in many people's eyes. Now, back to Alton Park and a race prepared E-Type just heads out onto the track. Bit of duct tape there across the top of the screen just to stop the wind getting in under the front edge of the hard top. That's the removable hard top that you can see on that car. Looks all very purposeful indeed, I do like that. Now, Brown Series 2 left-hand drive E-Type 2 plus 2. Now, will that car be restored in that original brown? It'd be a brave person who probably kept that original colour, but it'd be great if it did, because this, I think, is the only E-Type I've ever seen in this colour. Has it gone on to be restored? And if so, what colour is it now? Back to Donington, we've got AYM 182B, a 64 lightweight here. But, yeah, isn't that just... Just very purposeful, and as I said before, I think those wider wheels do suit the E-Type a bit. They do look a little bit under wheels sometimes, especially at the front, but slightly wider wheels do set them off. Now, not every E-Type went on to be restored and preserved and doted over, as these following photos show. We've got the remains of various E-Type body shells here, whether they were used for parts, or who knows. I don't know what the, the story is with these cars, but yeah. <laughs> uh, Clearly a mound of E-type parts there. So just to show, just as a bit of a contrast to all the shiny E-types that we've seen already in this video, and we will see later in the video, I thought I'd include just a few photographs of cars that weren't quite so lucky. And there's a, 
I don't know, those series one or series two E-type bonnet just disappearing into the undergrowth. Well, that would make a nice bit of uh, wall art in the house, perhaps. Okay, carrying on with these classic E-types. We've got two photos now of ENP 368B. That's a 64 car. Now, the 3.8s were made up to and including 1964. Now, is this one of them? Um, shortly afterwards, they switched to the 4.2 litre engine. Of course, they all had their triple SU carburetors at the time. I think this is probably a 3.8. Like I say, the Series 1s had those nice slender lights above the rear bumpers. The Series 2s had the chunkier lights beneath the bumpers. This is a wild bit of kit. This is the Quaker State sponsored E Type V12 racer of the 1970s. If you've ever heard a V12 E Type uh, or any V12 Jaguar on open exhaust pipes, it's just a phenomenal sound. Check out the video I've got on the channel up uploaded years ago of an XJS on open pipes. The noise is just phenomenal. Now, look at this. This is a beautifully restored Series 1 fixed head coupe. Look at the mirrors underneath, just showing the quality of the restoration underneath that car. What an incredible car that is. You'd be terrified of getting it dirty, of course, but what a, what a beautiful example. As is this 3101 WK, gunmetal grey Series 1 fixed head coupe. On the left, you can just see, peeking into view, the uh, blue Series 3 2 plus 2 V12 that we saw earlier in this collection of photographs. Now this is the Eagle Speedster, a much, much reworked interpretation of an original E-Type. When these first came out, I really, really liked them. Now, I, I still like them, but I'm not quite as sure now. I think I'd probably go for an original car if it was me. Maybe a few engine mods, but visually I'd prefer an original car like this one. CSK114, a 1963 3.8 litre E-Type Series 1 Roadster with a blue mohair, I think. Uh, soft top. Yeah, beautiful. This was in the paddock area at, I think, one of the Gold Cup meetings at Alton Park. Down to the Goodwood Revival a few years back, and we've got a matching pair of race-prepared E-types there, all looking very purposeful, and as I said before, slightly wider wheels, just fill out those front wheel arches a bit better, I think. Um, but yeah, glorious looking bits of kit. William Lyons knew what he was doing. Now, rear three-quarter view of a Series 3 2 Plus 2 V12. And you can see the very distinctive fantail exhausts that the V12s had. I did actually find one of those rear trims and had it on my Spitfire for a short period of time many years ago, back in the 1990s. Here's, a, here's another fixed head, which at the first glance you think looks like any other, but some serious carburetors going on there. And look at those wheels. I've never seen wheels like that on an E-Type Jaguar before. No spinners. I mean, I can't imagine they'd be too popular with passing cyclists. Head on view now, 7266WK, another lightweight or lightweight replica. I did look this one up and it's not been taxed since 2016. I mean, it doesn't need taxing if it's solely being used on the racetrack, I suppose. That was first put on the road in April 1963. It's listed as a 3.4 litre engine, but surely it's a 3.8 or larger. Next up, we have a J plate. Uh, what do we have here? V12 on the J, so that makes it, what, 1970 or early 1971? 2 plus 2. Staying with V12s and also in dark green we have a lovely V12 Roadster. That, that's on an M plate 1973 or early 1974. This one's got the uh, folding roof on it, no hard top on this one. Uh, it's folded up. A couple of other Jaguars in front of it as well. 509 TOD, we've got another Series 1 or one and a half fixed head there. Chrome wire wheels. I think I prefer painted wires, if I'm honest. And there's a body shell of another fixed head behind it for comparison. Presumably that's probably the restoration on that one's probably finished by now. Another lovely Series 1, 4.2. That's quite a late, so that'll be 65 to 67. And you can just see the E registration there. So that puts it at early 1967. Bit of a restoration project, these next two photographs. We've got an E-Type Roadster with hardtop. A little bit of work to do there, the bonnet's off. And then the next photograph, we'll see what the bonnet was hiding.
There we go, the inner workings of the uh, Jaguar E-Type. You can see everything, you can see how everything's laid out. You know, with the bonnet off, the access is really, really nice. But um, yeah, I wouldn't fancy manhandling that bonnet back into place and getting all the, sh the shut lines and the gaps sorted out. That must be a lot of fun. <laughs> down to Bista, down to Bista Heritage and one of their meetings there. We've got a front on view of a lovely fixed head here. And you can see how, you can see the rear tailgate's open. It's side hinged on the E-Type, which makes it a bit more unusual. Most cars have the, the rear tail get hinged at the top, but the E-Type is on the side. And the V12 fixed head here, the 2 plus 2. The V12s, the Series 3s, were only available as a Roadster or the 2 plus 2. You couldn't get the standard, the old fixed head coupe body. Um, you only had the choice of two, manual or auto, and power steering as well, all the mod cons. We've got another Series 3 here. This was a bit of a project. Um, this was in the auction area at the Gold Cup a year or two back. A white example, left-hand drive, been brought in from North America. A bit of work to do there. It looked okay. It was a bit of a 50-footer, this one, but getting close, and there's a fair bit of work to do. This is interesting. This is a fully stripped body shell of an E-Type fixed head coupe. And if you look closely, you can see where some of the panels are joined, and they would have been leaded over at the factory. Uh, but everything has been stripped back here, so it does expose where some of the panel joints are that you wouldn't normally see on the E-Type body. 49 FXN, another low drag here. This was a few years ago at the Goodwood Revival, I think about 2006 or thereabouts. Very, very purposeful looking car indeed, and these always sound just fantastic. That straight six XK engine is just a joy to behold when you hear it being given some welly. Back down to the Jaguar Daimler Heritage Trust at Gaydon, and this is their Series 2 Roadster. Love the example in white on chrome wires. Again, like I say, this is the only version that had the bumper that went across the air intake at the front. 13 FXN is another one of the low drag look E types. Very long front on these as well. Extended nose cone, smaller air intake. And we've got that little extra duct on the front there next to the racing number. There's a more conventional looking E-Type behind it too. Both being prepared for racing at Donington Park. This one popped up at a local classic car breakfast meeting not that long ago. FAW101C. That's a 1965 car. AW is a Shropshire registration. So it hadn't gone too far. Um, this uh, photograph was taken not far from Shropshire. Just up the road from the Shropshire border. The rear three-quarter view of a G-Reg Series 2, uh, 4.2, as all the Series 2s were. Like I say, the 4.2 was introduced in 65 on the Series 1, and all the Series 2s had the 4.2 litre straight-six engine. The V12 would come in the Series 3. Another E-Type in the foreground, and there is its sort of younger cousin in the background, the XK8. Or if there's any louvers on the bonnet, then it'll be the supercharged XKR version. But the design of the XK8, as you can see there, was very much inspired by the earlier car. Another one here, we've got a Series 2 Roadster in the evening sun at a little pub meet that took place a little while ago. Another beautiful example in red. Still plenty of E-types to go, don't worry. Some more restored cars and quite a few battered ones. And here, here's a bit of a project for somebody. Oh dear, this was in the auction area. One of the classic car auctions down at the NEC a few years back. A left-hand drive, imported car again. But heavens, there's a, there's a few weekends work there for somebody. If you can provide any updates on what happened to these cars, have they been restored now? Please let me know. Here we've got LNX7, another low-drag E-type racer down at Donington Park. Back to Cape Stone, and this is a second view. We've seen this one from the back already. The Series 1, 2 plus 2, it's on a D, so 1966. Quite a late one. 1966 was the year that the 2 plus 2 version with the extra row of seats and the high roof line was introduced. So that's quite an early 2 plus 2. Down to Malvern, this was in 2022 last year. If you haven't seen the video yet where I walk all up, spend a long time walking around the Malvern show, please check that one out. This is on a J plate, this Series 2, 2 plus 2. JMY 756B, that car dates to 1964, 64 being the last year of the 
Oof, and if you thought that other project E type was looking a little bit time worn, look at the state of this one. Has it been in the bottom of a river or somewhere? I don't really know. Look at the swathes of filler down the side there. There's a lot of work for someone there, but definitely worth doing. But good heavens, you'd have to know your way around a MIG welder and a, a set of panel beating hammers. Much happier though is this Series 2, a lovely Series 2 roadster we saw at Bista Heritage earlier this year, 2023. Just a beautiful car uh, alongside a very nice 911. Another nice one here, we've got a Series 2 on an F registration, so that's about what, late 67 or early 1968. It's got the extra marker lamps on the front wings there, or fenders, and it's left-hand drive. So again, presumably another import from North America. A lot of these cars have been brought back in recent years. Another beautiful race car here at Donington. Some old truck in the background, I don't know what that's all about. But yeah, lovely E-type Roadster with hard top there, and the uh, fuel filler cap recessed into the back wing as well. So that all looks very sleek and beautifully prepared, as all these old race cars are. It's always a joy to see them. Over to Alton Park, and this is a Series 1 4.2 fixed head coupe. I do like the painted wires. Chrome sometimes can look a little bit too blingy for me, but painted wires, and especially body colour wires, now they do look good. Down to Jaguar Daimler Heritage Trust again. Not only is 77RW on display, they're the oldest surviving E Type. This is the very last E Type built HDU 555N V12 Roadster. Built 12th of June 1974, the very final E-Type, the last ever car. Much earlier though, we've got a 4.2 here, 4.2 Roadster, red soft top. I'm not quite sure what colours were offered on the Roadsters. Um, I'd be interested to know actually if you could pop a note in the comments. Um, I assume they'd all be black. Maybe these different colours, the blue one that we saw before on this red one, is a later sort of thing that's become available. Who knows? Anyway, back to the paddock at Donington Park, I think. Another race repaired E type there. And again with those wonderful knock on wheels with the big centre spinners there. They're a lot quicker to remove and put back on, that's the main reason for those. A trio of wonderful classic Jaguars here. We've got a couple of Series 3 V12s in the foreground and a somewhat modified XK150 at the end there. Uh, very smart. Of course, the E types replaced the XK Series cars. Another 2 plus 2, this from early 1967, so it's a Series 1, 2 plus 2. That's quite a late example, actually. The Series 2s came out in 1968, so the year after this one. A peek inside the window of a race-prepared E-Type here. All looks very basic, very functional, no carpets or anything like that. And a 160 mile an hour speedo you can just about see. A three quarter view of a race prepared lightweight. You can see those uh, ventilation holes cut into the boot lid. I think that is to cool the rear brakes, if memory serves. A similar arrangement on top of the hardtop as well to cool the driver. Over to Langotham Motor Museum. This was a few years ago. I don't know if this car's still there. It's a Series 2. Um, but yeah, it's a nice colour. You don't often see them in this colour. This and that brown that we saw before. A couple of the, the scarcer colours that you find. Alfa, Alfa Romeo Montreal alongside that Jaguar as well, so that's a rare sight. Here we've got an F-plate um, E-type Roadster in white. It's a Series 1.5 I believe, it's quite a late one. No headlamp covers. Down to a good revival, there's always some interesting Jaguar action going on at revivals and here a whole lineup of E-types of different shapes and sizes being, being prepared for action. We've got a low drag in the foreground and I think the car just next to it is Cut 7. There were two cars registered Cut 7 and that's one of them. Another race prepared E-type here, I do like those colours, that looks really, really smart indeed. Back to Cape Thorn Hall and not that long ago we've got another E-Type on a private plate, Series 3 Roadster. I don't know if that particular car is a manual or an auto but most of them 
or automatic. The big 5.3 litre V12 engine. It was introduced in this car before it went into the XJ12. A bit older now is this lovely Series 1 here. This was at a breakfast meeting not that long ago. Series 1 with the covers over the headlamps on this example. That is a Series 2. So these were built. The Series 2 was introduced in 1968. You could get the fixed head coupe, the 2 plus 2 coupe, or the Roadster, which we can see here. There's another example of a Series 2. It's almost like a primrose yellow type colour, looking at this one in the early lights. There's some interesting cars in the background. You've got a Rover SD1 and a Citroen DS. The bright red Lotus is spree alongside. Very, very different cars to the old Jaguar that you can see there. Woo 2 is the registration of this race prepared fixed head. That's really, really smart indeed. We'll see a photo or two of that a little bit later at a Goodwood Revival meet. Got a variety of interesting cars there. There's a 65 E type fixed head in the foreground and an MGC Roadster. And in the background, a Citroen CX. Is that a GTI version perhaps? But yeah, quite a nice little lineup of cars. And of course, a little bright red Mini there alongside the MG. Cut 7. There's a, there's a bit of kit that is. That's the ex Dick Prothero low drag car. Like I say, there were two cars registered Cut 7, both of which feature in this particular video. But not so. <laughs> that's. That's a glorious car, that is. Now, what is this? Many modifications at the front of this particular E-Type. If you know what the story is with this car, seen in a classic auction area at the NEC a little while ago, please let me know. Four headlights, huge louvers in the side of the wings, no louvers on the top of the bonnet. What other changes are there incorporated within that car? I have no idea. This looks altogether a little bit more standard. Series 1 2 plus 2, the very early series ones, uh, you can identify them, just the first few hundred, they had external bonnet locks just on the side of the bonnet panel, just above where it joins the sill. And they also had flat floors, but you can't really tell that unless you look underneath. Next up, HJP 400, a rear view of another lightweight. And interesting, it's got Raymond May's name at the bottom of the number plate. I'm not quite sure what his involvement was there. And you can see the fuel filler cap, the quick, fuel, quick release fuel filler cap there in the rear boot panel. Back to Capesthorne and another view. We saw a side view of this glorious fixed head a little bit earlier, but I thought, well, I've just loved this photograph so much with the backdrop and everything. It just looked perfect. So I thought I'd include this second photo of this car here. Please forgive me, but I think that's just a great picture. And here we have XPX 297E. That's an April 68 register car. So that's a very late, very last, last of the line. Series one and a half roads just shortly before the series two was introduced. That's a, it's a very late series one and a half. Anyway, back to Goodwood, back on circuit. And we've got a, well, a trio of Jaguars there. There's a TVR behind and an AC Cobra and another E-Type. So quite a great GT race there. I can just imagine the sound of that lot pouring through Magic Corner there. The same corner, different view. We've got what we've got there, a Cobra, an E-Type, a Sunbeam Tiger, and a brace of Porsches in the background there. But yeah, what a great lineup. V8, straight six, V8, and a couple of Porsches at the back as well. And there they are going away from us, heading down uh, the back straight there, but yeah. These races are always great value for money. If you don't have, if you haven't seen some of the feeds from Goodwood Revival, um, just check them out. I put up a video of when we went in 2021, and the noise, the sound of these cars was just phenomenal. Anyway, that concludes this photo here of many different E-types. Concludes this collection and look at the classic Jaguar E-types, the XKEs, introduced in 61 and produced all the way through to 1974 when they were replaced by the very different XJS. Thank you very much for watching this. If you're a fan of uh, E-types, please let me know in the comments. Have a look around the rest of the channel because there's a fair bit of Jaguar content here, either, either specific to Jaguar or shows, etc., where Jaguars are present. So please have a look around the Capesthorn videos well worth looking at because you always get a good turnout of Jaguars in those. Anyway, thanks very much for watching this one and there'll be more videos along very, very soon. So bye for now.